All right, so we'll just start at the back, Sarah, and maybe we'll just... There's a question that came through uh, Facebook, so I'd like to read that one out of a good so Yeah, I'll Sarah. start with that one. So it just says, heard the land in South Shore is only 150 PA, and it has to be 300 PA for a jack and pack. Is this correct? I can't give you a specific answer because um, we'd need to know the nature of the site. It wouldn't necessarily be that, that 150 would exclude it altogether, and 300 might well be the only answer that can be used on that particular site. Thank you. All right. No question here. This side? Yeah. Sir. I'd just like to know about um, being paid out as opposed to uh, having repair done. Um, I've opted in, in my case, um, we've opted into the repair process, uh, but I understand in some situations um, EQC can uh, make uh, a payment, uh, and I just want to know if that can be enforced, whether you have to take uh, a cash payout as opposed to a managed repair. All right, we'll, we'll ask John to answer that, but I do recommend that you have a look at the cash settlement seminars because there's a fair bit of information in there. Under Section 29 of the Earthquake Commission Act, the Commission does have the option to um, either repair damage or else to cash settle claims, but if the Commission has made a representation through either writing or else through their conduct that they will do a managed repair, then it is possible to require them to honour that representation. Ma'am. Thank you. And uh, I wish anyway you people could be keep with me because I'm Chinese and sometimes actually maybe grammar or something would just not cry right. Now, what I want to ask that question was, now, we had the land, is it, I mean, our property is in TC3. Now, okay, t by the time comes now, and the fracture challenge, and fractures come to see us, and, uh, we, and then we got the geological report and things like that. But at the end of the day, I just want to get one question was, uh, do we need a second opinion? We only get one opinion from them, okay? So I wanted to know actually, do we actually classify to have a second opinion? Okay, if you want a second opinion, what they do to you is that you go and get yourself an independent engineer. Go and do this and go and do that. If I got that much money, I, I honestly, I will do that. But the thing was, we all know so well that this is our life saving. I wish anyway we can have another terminal, we can ask for a second opinion. Is that okay? Thank you. It's a very difficult issue that you've raised. Under the Earthquake Commission Act, the Commission does have a duty to duly determine the extent of the damage. But what we've found in practice is that in a number of situations, the EQC is not arranging for geotechnical drilling to be done and not arranging for structural engineers to review earthquake damage. Um, so. In that situation, it probably is the best course of action to engage your own engineer. However, if as a result of that, EQC changes its position, you are justified in asking EQC to reimburse your costs or at least a proportion of them. In addition to that, it is possible to apply for a Red Cross grant for some limited assistance, I think up to $750, to assist with the costs of expert reports. All right, thanks for that. So, ma'am, if you want to talk more about that, please talk to John after this. All right? So it's a, it's a great question, so thank you. Yeah. Ma'am. Um, we are just being got through to EQC because we're a multi-unit dwelling on TC3 land, and they're, we're having a meeting with them next week to f actually for them to tell us what they want to do. But they keep saying that it will meet minimum MBI standards, but we don't need consenting progress. But I take it from that that 
just because it meets minimum MBIE standards, it doesn't mean it will be sufficient to repair our foundations. It's very difficult to comment on an individual case like that, but um, we would expect that when they say they're going to meet the MBI conditions, they're going to come along with the necessary research that's required to know whether the foundation, as it was, performed well given the ground conditions. So TC3, if there's significant um, displacement in the slab, that should be a geotech report. If they don't have a geotech report when they come to see you, they haven't done enough work to be able to tell you how they will fix it. So that's the first thing. Right. That may be sufficient for the site. Depends on where the site is in TC3. The second thing you need is you need them to give you a scope of work, what they intend to do to the property, and then ask them why that is the scope of work. They should be able to tell you why they are doing what they're doing and why are they not doing more and why they're not doing less than what they put in that scope of work. If you get the answers that you want to that, I think you should reserve your position and take that information back and give it some consideration. And if you're at all uneasy about it, seek further advice. John, do you want to talk a little? I'll just make a general comment, if I may, about that. And um, at RAS, we see the standard and the MB guidelines as being the minimum standard, which is necessary to comply with the building code in the Building Act. So we see that as being the floor, whereas the standard that's in the Earthquake Commission Act or an insurance policy, the as new standard or the when new standard, seeing that as being the ceiling. And so what we know is that if a proposed repair isn't meeting the standard in the MB guidance, then it's not meeting the minimum standard and it's certainly not meeting the standard in the insurance policy. Um, if it is meeting the standard in the MB guidance, then it is not necessarily meeting the standard in the, as in the insurance policy and that is something that also needs to be checked. All right, so thanks, John. So minimum standards, and we have policies floating up above that. How do we negotiate with our insurers or EQC to get to that ceiling? And that's a question that's come up many times in different seminars about how we do that and how we can do that by ourselves or with support with some of the services, all right, or some of engineer or technical advice. So it's a very good question to ask, but not necessarily an easy one for us to answer, certainly as individual homeowners. Anyway, thanks for the question. Coming forward. Question? No. Question? Yes, sir. Hi. Um, my question is uh, the, the guidance. Does that relate just to a dwelling or does it relate to other buildings on the property such as an external garage? Because yeah, I'm in a situation where I've been told the garage is not important so we're not going to fix it. The requirements under the um, building code put garages into a different importance level from the house. So if the garage has got none of the utilities that belong in the house, like, they do, it, like you don't have a laundry in the house, but you have a laundry in the garage, it has different status from a garage that has just the car garage. So if it's just a car garage, it won't have the same standard requirement that's in the MB guidance. So for example, that might have the effect in um, a flood zone that someone would lift the house uh, to deal with the flood risk in the house, but they wouldn't lift the garage and there'd be no requirement for them to lift the garage because it's a different category of building. Does that answer your question? Thank you. And if you want to talk about that again in more detail, please just stay around and talk a little bit more with William later. All right, sir. Yeah, hi. Um, when the insurance company apply to the council for a consent, does the council study that 
the da technical data in depth, or does it just accept uh, sign-offs by engineers, insurance company engineers? The council has to satisfy itself that the building meets the building code. So they do enough analysis, so they'll look at the geotech and they'll look at the other information in order to decide whether it's appropriate to meet the building code. They are not looking to see if it meets your insurance policy, but if it meets the building code, they'll issue a consent, but they do analyse it. Um, hmm. um, my house is in a flood zone. It's in the, the my house is in a flood zone, 100 year just on the inside of it. Um, I've had my, I want, I'm wondering if the uh, insurance companies, if there are laws that they have to check the soil. Um, my garage had its soil tested by three engineers and the load, um, the soil wasn't good enough to take the load for a repaired cracked floor, which was a whole slab. But my house, which has got ring foundations and has sinking and is cracked and bowing out at the front, and the floors aren't level, um, they just want to fill those. Um, and there's no engineer's test been done on that, and yet the garage got three of them. So, and that was a rebuild. So. It's very confusing to me. I'm going some, back to something that Brian said before. How do we close the gap between what we think should be the, the outcome for our property and what the insurer thinks is? If the insurance company honours you as a client, they need to be able to satisfy you that what they are doing is the right thing. To do that, keep asking for the technical information. When the technical information says, here we've got such and such a thing happening on the ground, and here is what we were going to do about it, and here's what's happening on the superstructure, and here's what we're going to do about it. And they can tell you why they're going to do that work on the ground, or why not they're not going to do the work. Um, then you are getting close to being able to be satisfied about the repair. And that's how you will work the insurance company to get you to uh, uh, answer that satisfies you. But you do have to keep pressing them because it sounds from what you said that the house is TC3. It sounds like um, it should have some geotech work done on it. And if they can't tell you why they want to do what they want to do to the house that's sinking, then clearly they haven't got enough technical information. So they need to go back and do that technical work themselves in order to be able to tell you why they're not doing the work. And when they do the ge geotech work, it will become apparent that there's something issue going on there that involves the ground, which means that the solution will be different from the first solution they offer. All right, thank you for that answer, William. <laughs> 